Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter. And today I'm here with something. I'm just basically prepping for the holiday season. Now, um, I like Christmas, but I'm in not a huge Christmas card person. I mean, I don't send Christmas cards. I feel if you're someone who would send a Christmas card to, I should really spend some point in the Christmas week Pick them up, picking up a phone and giving you a call and having a chat, meeting you for a coffee or a drink or just having a face to face on video as a catch up. I would much rather do that than spend a fortune on a card and send it. Although I do send a few cards out in the holiday season as a thank you for the support throughout the year or if I'm working with a company or a, a TV channel or something, I'll usually send them a card to say thank you for the sport in the year. So today I was inspired by seeing Patricia from PM Artist Studio earlier this week in one of the streams. She started making backgrounds, which is good, turn into greetings cards. And I thought, you know what? I've got the perfect stencil for that. It's a new launch. It's not one of mine, but I love it anyway. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to do what's called a long haul. You may have seen me do them before. I know Eddie from Eddie Makes Art has just done one. Quite a few people do them. I basically use the same stencil, numerous different colours of paints, and we create this outline of the stencil that is eventually pulled off with another another colour. It gives an interesting effect. You'll get, you'll get it as I go along. Anyway, you'll get it. Um, I thought I want to do that because I've only got about three cards I need to send out this year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a background put them onto a greetings card and then I'll decide then whether the panel I put on the front needs anything else or not. So you're going to see me do that process. Okay, I'm using this which is called Persian Lattice. It's a 9 by 12 stencil and here is the very stencil. It's absolutely stunning. It is actually designed by PM Artist Studio, not one of their designers and I am one of their designers. Um, so just a few things to explain. This here says exclusive for Arty Perks only. So if you were to go to PM Artist Studio website, there they are. Um, if you were to actually sign up for one of their um, perks, basically that gives you an extra discount off any purchases you've got. Um, but also it means you get exclusive access. I think when a new stencil from PM Artist Studio comes out, I think it's exclusive for six weeks and then after that anybody can order it. So I'm going to give you something at the end of the video if you order it um, without joining this. But anyway, let's just get on with this. So, right, that's going to go to one side. Um, this is PM Artist Studio. That's Patricia. That's Mariah and their artist studio. This is when they do lives. I love this. I love the group they've got on Facebook and I'll put a link to that in the description box below. I'll also link this stencil, but just be aware that it's an exclusive for a set amount of time. By the time you see this, the exclusivity may have worn out anyway. I'm not 100% certain because I don't know the timeline. So I'm going to do, let's see if I can put over there, it's out of my way. I'm going to do a lot of pulls of different colours. So I've actually um, cut my carnival tissue paper, which is a wet strength tissue paper, into approximately the size of this plate. And this is a nine by 12 First put plate. a layer of red paint down here. Now, it's it's a brand new plate, uh, a brand new stencil. I'm using Country Red by Art Deco. If I forget the paint colors to tell you what they are, guys, I'm sorry, but my mind will be a little bit distracted. Now, the reason I want to put a layer of paint down here first is so that when I actually, oh, that's not a good sign, having a piece of that on there. Actually, I can probably put this directly on here. Um, the reason I want to put some paint down very first of all is because the pieces of the stencil that are on there will cover up any other paint. So if I've got red there, there's a good chance when I pull it off, I'll have some re red line residue behind it. Now, because it's a brand new stencil, it could easily pick up everything I'm just about to put down. But it's a it's a risk I'm willing to take. I think I need a little bit more of that. I want a reasonable enough coat. I don't want it to slide around, but I do want it to be a reasonable coat so that there's a good chance there will be some of it left on the plate at the end of the process. 
Now I'm using acrylic paints because that's my medium of choice. Right. So let's see if I can line this up again without getting too much paint on my fingers. I think that's a reasonably good idea. Now I'm immediately going to come in and I'm going to pick up what's exposed. And you'll see that the paint changes colour or the design changes colour when the paint has been pulled through. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to lift everything that's in the gaps. Now I'm using the pads of my finger to push down. I can also take something like a soft bit of kitchen towel and go in and I'm not rubbing vigorously, but as you can see, I'm just rubbing enough so that all of the designs on the tissue start to change color. And that, that means that if, if the tissue is changing color, it's then picking up whatever's underneath it. Now, the wider the apertures or the open space on the stencil, the quicker this process will be. I mean, I'm, I'm doing this with wet strength tissue paper, remember guys, this isn't gift wrap tissue paper, it's wet strength. So I've got some working time with this and I know that it's not gonna tear when I pull it up. Every piece of tissue I pull up will get used eventually in collage work or it'll be in my art journals, I could make backgrounds from it, anything I so wish. But And I don't mind bits of it being left on here because what we're trying to do is, as we put layers of paint on and pull layers of paint off, we'll create a halo effect in these small apertures. And then when I do the final pull of the stencil off, we'll have to let all those little areas dry fully before I put a final pull color on it. And I think the final pull color is probably going to be gold. So let's pull this off here. This is such a beautiful stencil. So see what I mean? That gives me an absolute beautiful piece for collage. So that's gonna to go to one side. So now we've got the initial paint down, I want to actually come in now. I'm gonna put on a darker gold immediately, just so that I've got a little bit of a, oh, it's another piece of that. I need to start cleaning my paint before I turn the camera on. Now this time I'm gonna come in with the paint from my palette over here. I intend using mainly warm colour paints and by that I mean um, of the warm spectrum as in reds and oranges and pinks and magentas, um, also some of the purples will be in here, the maroons, that sort of range. Although I must admit because I do want to add some purples in with this I could veer into the cool colours quite quickly but I don't, I don't need to focus on those. When you're using this process of laying paint down over a stencil, a couple of things you need to be aware of. If you've got a clean gel plate, which I have, and you've got a brand new stencil, which I have, it's going to be easier to accomplish. If, however, you've got a dirty plate and you've got an older stencil that maybe already has paint on it, it could move around on you. That's another reason why if you put a first layer of paint down to lay the stencil on, it will help secure it all. Let's just lay that over the top. Right, I come in now and do this now. Um, this time, yes, I want to pick up most of the paint, but I don't mind if little bits get left on. This is why it's called a long haul, because you'll be doing this process over and over again. You don't want it lifting up, so try and keep it left down there. So again, a really nice, delicate piece. That's gorgeous, and it's picked up some of the red in that. I'm loving that. I'm going to have some beautiful pieces of tissue after this. Right, so I've got that on there. I think at this point I want to add something that's got a pop of darkness about it. Right, this is plum purple now. It's a plum purple I've made up. It's not an actual bottle of plum purple. It's... It's probably a few purples and a few plums and a bit of red paint where it have been end of tubes and end of bottles and stuff like that. And I've just mixed them up in the one bottle. So I haven't made it all from scratch, but I have made that colour. Also, a little bit more paint is required when you're brayering 
and this is a brayer, over a stencil because, of course, you've got to allow for the depth of the stencil to let the paint down to the plate. Now, we know it's not a thick depth of stencil, and the stencil is made from Yupo, which is 100% polypropylene, I believe it is. I'm sure that's right. I, I always get it wrong. I can, I can never remember what plastic it is, but it is it is degradable. And that's one of the reasons I like designing for it is because I know that it's a little bit of help for the planet if I'm doing something with something that can eventually biodegrade. So, right. Let's just clean off my fingers. So on to the next pole. Now, every single time we put a colour on, not only will we be putting colour on, we'll be leaving colour behind. And that's where this gets really, really exciting. Again, a really nice. Now, I'm going to veer back and forth between different colours or else it's all going to look like one big black outline. I've got this transparent yellow here. So let's put some of that on. That will, that will, I guess we're running low on that paint then. This will sort of give it a bit of an orangeness. Now, the reason I'm sticking roughly with one family of colours is for the simple fact that I don't want to make mud. And if you know your colour theory and you know your colour wheel, if you mix the wrong colours together, you get this beautiful brown sludge. So I'm trying to avoid that because that's not my aim today. Let's put that over to one side. I think that straight would be a good idea, Griffiths. There you go. Um, I did mention um, Eddie Makes Art, and he's recently done a long pull. What I'll do is I will link his video below. Um, I will... Can I remember when it is? I, I will try and find um, Patricia and Mariah's live stream that they did where Patricia was starting her backgrounds. I think it was only a couple of weeks ago. So I will have a look and if I can find it, I'll also put it in the description box. Below. A lot of us love to experiment and push, push that artistic boat out. And that's what I like to do. I like to take an idea, a concept, be inspired by something and push it in another direction. Okay, loving where that's going. Right, I think Winter and Newton Silver will be a good way to go on this. Um, I have the habit of using my 5x7, as you see, as um, a paint palette. Or if I'm stamping with acrylics, I'll use that as my kind of ink pad. And I do that because I can tend to be a bit heavy handed with my paints. And I like to judge what I'm putting on there by what I'm putting on here. So just know not everyone does that. In fact, there's a few people I think do it nowadays. Um, but it's something I've always done. There are occasions when I will put paint directly onto the gel plate. And that may be that maybe I want, I want to do multiple pulls of the same piece. And I don't mind it being a bit thicker on the plate. But a lot of the time, if I've gone too heavy handed on the plate with the one load of paint, I end up then struggling getting the effects I want because maybe I'm looking for de delicate and I'm not going to get it if I've got a huge amount of paint on here. Right, coming in again. So do feel free to fast forward, guys. I'm never offended by that. I fast forward other people's videos because once I've seen the technique done once and they keep repeating the same technique, sometimes I just want to go and see the end result. Why are you picking up? You shouldn't be picking up. That's subtle. Liking that. Now, I've got quite a bit of a build-up happening in there. I don't want to come in. I'm not going to put more paint down. I'm just going to try and pick up a little bit more. We might we might keep this one in reserve. Um, and I'll use it a few times as we go along. Purely because I'm seeing quite a bit of a build-up in certain areas. 
that I'd like to pull up now. Let me put this, I need to remember that I'm running low on that. I did to go up over here. Right, up you come. See, there was still quite a bit of paint down in there. Now, I don't mind it gathering around the lines of the stencil, but I'd like to keep the middle relatively clear. So I'm going to put that to one side because we might pop in and out of that one. Right, so I've gone reds, silvers, magentas. Did I do a purple? I didn't do a purple after all, did I? What have I got here? OK, I've got wild violet. That's going to add a good punch of something. Ooh, it's another one that sounds like it's running out. I feel a shopping trip coming on. Actually, funnily enough, actually, by the time you see this, what well, I will have come and gone. Um, I'm going to a big, well, I'm going to three big arts, uh, three big shows at the National Exhibition Centre at the NEC in Birmingham. This coming weekend, I leave day after tomorrow because I'm working at the show. And there's there's a big Christmas craft show. There's a big arts and craft show. And then there's something called Cake International. which is Now, once this is done, we are going to have to wait for it to fully dry before I put the pool colour on it. The pool being the final coat that I pull it off with. We are then going to have to wait even more for me to pull the colour. So it could be that I do this today and then I film the result tomorrow. So, but these are all things that I have to put up with. Ooh, that's a powerful colour, isn't it? Ooh, that's a bit of a punch. Let's see. Um, acrylic, high philosophy, vi vivid white. See, I'm so bad at doing I store my paint tubes upside down like this because so, they stand on the lids. And this is the sort of stuff that happens if you don't clean off, clean off this section. There you go. Well, I think I've got a bit too much white paint on there. I don't mind if it picks up any of the paint underneath and turns it pink. Doesn't bother me. This is all about just adding layers and layers and layers of paint. Now I'm going to have to start thinking about what colours to pull this with. I did say I wanted to pull it with gold, but it could be that I want it to be pulled with gold and something. Maybe I could do an ombre effect. Um, I wouldn't mix gold and green because I know that if I'm thinking this is more seasonal, e.g. red and green, then if I did gold, gold and green together, I'm going to get a very peculiar colour, I think. Uh, I think I've got enough of that picked up. I'm going to come in as I've got quite a bit of white here. I might add another colour to that white, blend it a bit and give it another pull. Because as you can see, there's a heck of a lot left behind and there's a heck of a lot left on here. Let's go back and revisit the red we started with. So the red and white will obviously make pink. Doesn't bother me. We're, we're in the pink mode. So let's just meld that up a bit. There's going to be a bit of blood on the dance floor with this one, I can tell you. As Mariah would say, it's going to go a bit murdery. There's nothing with a bit murdery, Mariah. So what was the group I was talking about? Um, the Facebook group that Mariah and Patricia from PM Artist Studio, um, I want to say started, initiated, owned, um, whatever the correct terminology is, I'm not 100% certain. Uh, it's, called the Makers, it's called Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artists Group. I'm going to put that over there, just so it picks up all that while I'm doing the rest of it. Um, and it's a group where if you wish to join, as I said, I will put the link in the description box. Uh, it'll take you three questions to get into the group. And that's purely to make sure you're not a robot or a spammer. Um, so you'll answer three questions to get into the group. The group is, without a doubt, in my personal opinion, one of the most supportive, creative groups I've ever been part of. 
It is now the only group I'm part of. Um, I join groups when I'm invited to do collaborations, like I've got a few collaborations coming up. In fact, I think I've got one coming up this month, this month being November. Um, I've got one coming up with Rachel and Bella Crafts, I believe, towards the end of the month. But yeah, so I, this is the only group that I actually long term am with. So if you're ever trying to find me in a group, it's Makers Mixed Media Art and Artists group. Right. That's a very flat colour. But you never know, I might use these tissues in the future for other cleanups. Right, lay that over the top. This is this is our dirty one. I say dirty as in it's picking up the ghost prints. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna pick this up this time and then this one will stay as it is. There you go. See, it's getting really... I'm still hitting the design, not far off, though. Right, now I need to give this a bit of a think for a second. Um, so this is, as I said, Prussian blue. It's an opaque. I know it's an opaque. Now, we might come in in a few minutes and put... I've got some liquid transparent ones I could put in there, just so the liquids go into all the little nooks and crannies. I'm, I'm heading towards... Towards the end game, should we say, on this this thing. Now, I want to make sure I've got some definite outlines going. So that when it comes time to pull the final one, we do have some really nice markings on this plate. Because that's what this, this whole thing is about. It's about leaving the design of the stencil on the plate. And then when you pick it up with the next one, it pick the next colour... It picks up everything, all the grunge, everything that's left on the plate. Oh, I was just about to lift that off. Stop, Griffith, stop. Think what you're doing, kid. Think what you're doing. Actually, let's use this one, the clean-up one, to pick this up with. Because that might give us some really nice effects on here. Because as you heard me say... I use my tissue once it's painted up for pages in my art journal. I use it on collage pieces. Um, if, you, if you're someone who's subscribed to my channel, you will see I've used tissue for many, many things. Tissues, paper pulls, everything. I decorate boxes. I use them in journals. I use them as pages. Um, I just use them a lot. I like them. I love, I love the fact that because it's on tissue paper... Um, if I'm collaging on something, it actually collages around corners as well. Ooh, that's a bit of grunge, isn't it? That's interesting, but there's a heck more down there. Well, I'm going to pick up the pink one we had, the really pale pink one, which I said looked really flat. And we're going to come in. I'm using, even though it's slightly damp still, because it may do one of two things. It'll either pull up the paint that's on the, on the gel plate, or it will add paint from the tissue to the gel plate. And fingers crossed, nothing will tear in between, because that would be an absolute disaster. Okay, that gave me some stuff. That gave me some very interesting stuff. Right, there's still too much paint on there. I want that lifted off. So let's come in now with a clean piece. So, although this seems like a long process, think of it as a very productive process, because already we've got 10 backgrounds printed on tissue paper, all from the one sitting. Now, I do know you can do a lot more than 10. I mean, I think I've seen Patricia do 20 plus. I've seen Eddie do many more as well. I've seen him do a fair few, I think. I can't remember whether he did 15 or 17 in his last one. In the past, I've done 20 plus as well. It's interesting. It's an interesting process. So let's pull this off. Ooh, yes, that's, that's pulling beautifully. There you go. That's a lovely one, actually. That worked really... I like the way it's pulled up other colours within it. Now, I do have some of the Prussian left on this plate. So I think I'm going to come in 
and actually give this one more coating of Prussian because I don't want to waste that paint. And then what I think is I'll just do, let's do one more, should do one more color or two, maybe two more colors. And once I've done two more colors and then, then we will lift it and see actually what's underneath here. Let's put that on there. Actually, I think if I remember correctly, I've got some, I've got a red in shuttle art. Um, they're like glazes. I'll just put that on there to sit for a second. And just put this on there to sit for a second. Okay, where's that box? So I treated myself to this about a month ago. Um, Shuttle Art Acrylic Paints. Um, thanks to everyone who contributed via my thanks, which is the button under here where you can contribute a couple of dollars to my channel to help support me purchase art supplies for future videos. So it came with paintbrushes. You can never have too many paintbrushes. It came with a palette as well. And then it came with two, four, six, eight, eight 20 different colors of these. Um, it's almost like a metallic glaze. I think that's how I would best describe it. And there's a red in there. As you can see, I'm hoping it's not that pink when I pull it out. Um, so yes, I haven't really played with these a lot. I was going to do a review of them and I may still do a review of them, but I haven't done it yet. So life has just been a little bit too busy, people. So, so I think we'll put a layer of this on next. Right. That's cleaned that plate up lovely. Again, things like this I can use. I can stamp on them. I can do stuff on top of them. Oh, try to put that down. There's still tissue down here. That's lovely. I like that. I could put that as a page in the journal even. Right, now. Um, this, I believe, is semi-transparent. So it's going to be more of a glaze. And I think what I might do... Is it open? It is open. I think I'm going to put this directly on here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Then I might do, because see, it gives a really nice glazed effect. What I might do is I might then come in once we clean this plate up. And I might put another layer of the glaze down in a different colour but thinner than this. I, d I don't want it this thick. Um, right now, um, apparently there is a shiny side or a slightly smoother side and a slightly more textured side to this um, carnival tissue paper. Some people say use the rougher side. Some say use the smoother side. I use whichever side is facing down when I pick the piece of paper up. I, I personally have not found there's much difference between one side and the other. Let's lift this. I can't get a hold of it. There you go. You can see that metallic glaze to this now. What I'm going to do is I want to pick up a bit more, but remember this purple one? It had a lot of paint on it. I think I'm going to redo this one over here and see if I can pick up any of the, the glaze on this one. Purely because, why not? I wonder if I just bray this gently. Because this tissue is a little bit damp and I think that the brayering action will be a little more gentle on it. Okay that's given me an interesting dark and moody. Wish I'd have had that before Halloween. So right so I was thinking about putting <clears throat> um, another glaze on here but I actually don't think I am now. I've just, I've, me being fickle me I've just changed my mind. Um, 
I do quite like the idea, however, of adding a bit of patterning into the background. But what I intend doing is I'm going to get a colour. I must remember the final pool is probably going to be gold. So I might use something quite dark and put areas of this pattern in here. And I might do that one or two times with different things um, just to build some pattern up in there before I lift this off and then we let it dry and then we pull the whole thing up. Now, crimson red. Let's use crimson red. I've not used crimson red in this yet. I was going to use a liquid purple as well, wasn't I? Let's do that first. Right. I've got this dioxanine purple. Please excuse my phraseology. I can't say these big words. They are beyond me. Right. Um, actually, I can probably do it directly on there. That's probably way more than I need. But I'm willing to make a fool of myself. Not that that's not happened several times in my life. Oh, that is, that's a bit swampy. I'll be doing a couple of pulls of this one, I feel. I'm hoping what this will do is it will put a final line around all of the pieces on here which means that I'll be pulling up something that's got really nice sharp design to it right not going to press down too hard on that one I'm just going to lift it and get it out of there there you go you can see how wet that is right, let's get another one on the go you can see what I mean I'm just a bit heavy handed with paints not intentional it just happens um I don't know why, it's just, I'm just terrible at judging the right amount of paint. I've often said, I think it's because my plate size of choice is my 12 by 12 plate. And the trouble is, when you're used to using a 12 by 12 all of the time, and I do use it pretty much all of the time, what happens is you get used to the quantities of paint that you squeeze out onto a plate. So, of course, I'm putting the amount of paint I will put on for a 12 by 12 onto this size, which is obviously wrong. But been wrong before, never a problem. I like the richness of that purple. Right, do I want to come in one more time? I think I do. Just have a little more clean up because anything I put over the top of this may not show through if there's no aperture to, to show through. As I said, I'm hoping that the red I put down first of all is actually going to be okay to, and stay there. But I've got a sneaky suspicion because this is a brand new stencil unused before that it's actually going to pull up all of that red when I pull up the stencil. See, there's still quite a bit down there, but that's actually good. I'm, I'm happy with how clean that is now. So right, I was going to put this red. I don't need a lot of paint this time. Well, I didn't need a lot of paint the other times either, but did it stop me? Oh, no, it didn't. Ho, 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 and here we go. Right, I'm going to come in with this. I don't want this all over. And yes, for the observant, yes, I did start the top right hand corner again. Um, And actually, I might do it in a crisscross effect so that it gives me grid lines. Don't know why I feel grid lines today, but I do feel grid lines today. Right, so that's put something on here that fills in some of the gaps. Now, I want to put in something. Well, I need to clean off this, this first of all. Right. So I want to use some black. Where's my Mars black gone? I'm right, I need to pick up some more black and run me low on black. I should really, well, I have got a list somewhere of what I need to pick up at the show. But hopefully I'll remember to add black to it. Right, definitely don't need a lot of black. So 
Let's come in. I'm going to look at the areas where I didn't put the lines. Now, I am also remembering, guys, this is going to be in panels. So if this is cut into four panels, of course, the stuff won't be on all of the panels. It'll just be on some of them. And it'll just be in some areas. I think that's enough of that. Right, I'm going to pull this off here. Yes, I'm happy with that. Now, I'm going to lay this stencil down onto a square of the tissue and it's just over here and I'm going to very quickly run my brayer over the back of it because what I'm hoping to do let's see if I can do it let's move that out of the way for this second I don't think it's stuck to that so this is my pile of tissue I've laid it down you've got to work quite quickly because it'll want to stick to the tissue or the paper, whatever you're bringing it up. See, and that's given me an extra piece that was unexpected. And I really love that. That's a great background for something else. So let's see where we're at. So just on a quick count, we have created 17 backgrounds while generating this one. Now, what I need to do now is I definitely need to turn the camera off for a little while because Everything, this needs to be fully dry before I come in and try and do the final pull. Um, gold is a bit hit and miss as a pull colour. So I am going to use gold, but I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the plate and then I'm going to leave it for a couple of hours. I may even leave it overnight, to be honest, so that it's fully dried and all of the layers have adhered to themselves. In fact, that might be a good idea and leave it fully overnight. And I'll do this in the morning so you can see what it looks like, um, because I don't want. Um, if you think of a sheet of paper like this, it's laminates of layers of paper. And what happens is if this is your gel plate and it's in contact with something wet, this layer softens because of the paint and then it works its way up to this and that'll be softer. But then this will be the original hardness. So if I then come in and pull the entire piece off, what will happen is this piece and this piece and this piece might come off, but it might pull away from the wet bit. This bit sticks on the plate and these all pull off. And that's why sometimes your card and your paper sock tear and stay behind because you've moistened the laminates of the paper or the cardstock or whatever you're using and it hasn't fully dried. But once it's fully dried, all of these laminates rebond together. So when you pull, you pull everything off in one go. Hopefully that made sense because I think it did to me, but we'll have to work on that one later. Right, going to turn you off, going to sort this out and I'll be back with some something when it's dry. So guys, we're back and this is dry. I'm sure it's dry enough to pull up. This is from before. That's dry enough to pull up. So I'm going to put it one side though for a second, purely because I thought I'll do something now because I'll probably forget at the end. Just wanted to show you all of the prints that we produced from this process so these could be used for collage these could actually be printed on further to enhance them some of the more transparent ones you could put a color on the back you can use them for collage you could use them for cards you can use them for tags there's a lot you can do with them so th i just thought we'd do a quick flick through so this is just the cleanup sheets from there again this was just a cleanup sheet from there these are in no particular order guys so that was obviously i don't know which one that was but Again, interesting print. I'm loving that one, actually. I think that would look really great with some silver. This was using that Shuttle Art Metallics. So I've kind of lost some of the detail when you look at it flat. But I'm sure if I went on and put black on this side, then when you looked at this, it would be more vibrant. So something to play with within the future. This was that really liquid one. Was it the diosinine, diosinine? That funky purple, I can't say. So yeah, it was way, way too much liquid for this to handle. But it's a good base for something else. Next time I do a gel printing session, maybe this will be a clean up sheet of some of the patterns. Really liked this one, actually. It's a real rusty look. I've got a project coming up. I think next year where I need the color rust. And I think I'm gonna put this to one side because I really do think that needs to be saved for that project. Okay, 
another one here, lilac. This was the magenta, and I think this was a couple of pulls over the same piece, but still nice, rich colours. Again, a really deep, deep colour, that one. Loving that. This was the second pull of the diosanine purple, the really liquid one. This was the second one, which is why most of the colour had been mopped up by the first one. Really subtle. I think this was the silver when we added it with some red. This was just a mixed up one. I have no idea what was on. I've got a feeling this was the magenta over the pink that we pulled off. But still a nice bit of grudge. As I said, these are just the starting point for something else. These will go into my box of prints that need more work. So maybe I could do a different style of stencil completely over the top. It may happen in a future video or it may just happen in the process of doing videos. Um, this one was just a bit flat. Um, can't remember what colour I used for this, but it didn't. It just flatted out. So this is definitely a, someone that we use something else. I like this one. I, that's another one I think I would leave as is. Maybe put a deeper colour on the back to make the front really pop out. This one I like. This was is the other blue. And I think this was the very first one we took, which gave me that really nice dramatic, almost tile effect. So anyway, enough of those. Those can go to one side, out of my out of my eye shot. Must remember put this somewhere. So, right. So we're going to be putting gold on here. Now I've got my piece of paper all ready to go. As I said, it's two hundred and fifty gram cardstock because I need it for card panels or card layers. So we're going to put this on. This is um, iridescent precious gold. Um, I'm going to put it on reasonably thick but not so thick that it's swampy. Um, and we're going to take it by there. Now, I am going to do what I normally do, which is use my plate. I could put it directly on here, but I think if I'm brayering and brayering and brayering, um, it's going to start softening the paint below it, and it could start pulling it up, and that's not what we want in this. But I do need to make sure I've got a nice, even coat all the way over this, all the way to the edges, because I'm not sure how many panels I'm going to actually be able to get out of here. Just trying to get a nice even coating on here. And what the aim is, um, the even coating will start soaking down into the paints below it and reactivate or soften them so they can be picked up. Right, that's enough of that, I feel. Let's come in. Right. Right, so this one needs to sit overnight. And it is going to sit overnight because there's a lot of paint. Now I'm using my Baron. A Baron is a, it's a smoothing tool, basically. Um, I bought one from Cody Woodcrafts on Etsy. I use it all the time. The reason I use it is purely because I found pressing down on paper all of the time started to dry my hands and they cracked. And I do suffer occasionally with eczema. So it was just, it was promoting that in my body, which I wasn't happy about. And also I'm a man of a certain age. And if you were forever pressing down, I was beginning to get wrist pain. This is the perfect size for my hand. It's got, as you can hear, it's got a reasonable weight to it. So it means that it's doing the pressing down and I'm not. Right, so I'm trying to make sure that's completely in contact. Let's turn this over and see if I can have a little bit of a sneak peek of what this might look like. Let's turn it round. Ooh. Now, the thing is, that's going to come out lighter than you can see it here, because obviously the gel plate is over it. And I think the gel plate has got um, a certain bit of staining on it already. So that's... That's going to be a very modern looking background. Can't wait to take that off. Now, what I could do once this comes off is I could then work on the front of it to add more detail. But we'll see what this looks like when it comes up. So this is going to go over to one side on a shelf out of the way, not to be touched till the morning. 
Um, PM Artist Studio, I'm one of their stable of designers. They do lives. These are Central American time. So you need to do the conversion time. You basically just need to go to their YouTube channel. If you put on notifications, it should let you know when they're going live. This is their website. Just go in PM Artist Studio. I think it's .com, to be honest. Um, it'll pull it up. These are what I was talking about, about the perks that they've got. If you sign up for one of their perks, now what you need to do is you need to register on their website, but you would if you're buying any anyway. And then once you register, look for perks and the perks will give you different levels of um, discount on your purchases. However, if you want to wait till the exclusive time is over and just purchase it without signing up, when it becomes public purchasing, if you put this as it's spelt here um, into the discount code box at the end, if you spent more than $35, this will give you 10% off, guys. So whichever way you do it, you're going to have some sort of discount somewhere. Or at least you've got the option to have a discount somewhere. OK, so I, I think I'm going to wait till the morning now. Um, clean that brayer off as we're here. That's one way to pretty up a print isn't it okay guys i'll be back in two seconds for you for me it'll probably be about 14 to 18 hours i believe um let's just hope i can get the print off the gel plate at that point okay guys thanks for your patience now, i'm gonna let you know that if you leave stuff overnight it's going to be harder to pull it off the plate also go around the edges and press the edges of your plate because if you've got any gunk or any debris on there, that's a bit that's likely to grip your page. So I'm just going to come in and I really don't want to crease my card. So just pull this along. Once you've got it started, you're fine. It's just getting it started. Actually, let's do something different. I normally take a paper off the print. Let's take the print off the paper. Let's do it this way around. See if that's a little bit easier. I just want to be able to hold the paper down as I peel back. I don't I don't want to fold the paper because that can happen when you're really tugging and pulling. So and you get a reveal as it happens. There you go. Right, once you've started it, things should go a little smoother. Oh, right, I would come in afterwards and clean up the edge of these plates, but you don't need to see that just now. That's pretty good. I like that. Now, I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen as far as when I put this on a card. I am probably going to decorate this a bit more. I'm wondering whether I want to glaze that. I mean, the gold is in there. Actually, no, let's leave that as it is, because I don't know what I'm going to do. Over the... Actually, I'm looking at this thinking I'd really like to intensify this a little bit. That pink isn't exactly what I was thinking of. So maybe we're going to have to do a little bit of a, of a moment on the front. So let's move that to the back and I can give this a really quick glaze. And the glaze is basically a transparent layer of colour. Naphthian red. What colour is Naphthian red? Right, looking at the swatch here, it is transparent. I think I'm going to go with this because what I want to do is I want to turn the pink bits. Hopefully you can see those, the, the pink areas. I want to turn them red. Now, what this is going to do, of course, is this is going over the top of the gold. So I'm hoping because it's a transparency, it'll just knock back that gold a little bit. Um, put it straight on the print. That would be a good idea. I also know that I don't need a lot of it. So in true form, Kerry needs to make sure he doesn't put too much down. I already feel like I have. So let's grab some paper and just brayer off the excess. So I'm looking for a really thin coat of this, which is why it's called a glaze. Now, if it's not 100% even, I actually don't mind it not being 100% even um, in that I don't mind if it's a uniform coating. I do want to get this as thin as I can get it. 
but just as an indication, I want to make sure that it's as thin, thinner veneer or layer that I can get. Right, I think we're getting to the point where that's starting to lift off because it's drying. So let's get this sucker down and do that. Now we don't need to leave this sit. It's going to go on and come back off again. So I'm just going to use a braid just to make sure I'm fully in contact. I'm not aware of any bubbles or anything on my gel plate. And let's just peel this baby up and see what we've done. Right, we've really, really knocked that into the background now. I feel when I come in, I'm going to be adding more gold into this because I seem to have lost the gold. I think this may, oh, there's interesting on there. Let's just take this out of the way there. Take all of the brayer stuff out of the way because I wasn't intending on brayering this morning. So, right, let's have a little think about this. This has gone in a direction that I wasn't hoping it would go in. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to pull it back slightly using the very same stencil that we used in the first place because as you can see it matches up perfectly and I think if I come in and sponge in some of the gold that I used then I think that's going to give me some interest. Now I've got small pieces of sponge here. Um, they're just sponge from packaging. That's all this is, just chopped up. If it's free packaging, I'm going to use it. Right, I think I need it a bit smaller than that. As I said, it was, it's the gold that I've lost and it's the gold I want to put back in again. So this, I believe, is the gold we used, which was, was it the deep gold? No, it's used, used this, this gold. I think it was the iridescent precious gold. I'm not sure, to be honest, guys. So I'm going to put a bit down on the plate. Ooh, runny low on that, to remember that one. So I'm just going to come in with the sponge. I'm going to pick up a bit of it, tap a lot of it off, and I'm going to focus on the areas where the, I call them the centre of the eye, because that was the bit that I liked being gold. I don't mind if it blends out a bit to the sides. That's completely fine with me. So there you go. So every day is a different challenge, isn't it? But nothing that's not going to be able to be rectified in some way. As I said, all the way along, these are meant to be a background panel. If I thought they were going to be absolutely stunning and beautiful, I could easily leave them as just the panel on their own. And I won't know that until I actually put it on the card. Now, what am I going to do with you watching? I decided last night when I was looking at this, I'm not going to force myself to make the finished product today. I'm going to cut them into panels and then I'll attach the panels to the card fronts. And I've chosen cream colored card front uh, card blanks because I think that'll enhance it even more. What I didn't want to do though, is I don't want to stencil or put anything on the front until it's nearer the time. I think it's about seven or eight weeks to Christmas. So currently I don't know what I'm going to put on the front of these. Now I could stencil something on the front, which is more than likely what I am going to do. But I don't know at this point, so I'm not going to force myself to finish them just to make the video complete. What I will say is, once they are done, I will share the image on my social media, which would be my Facebook page, which is Kerry Griffiths Creative Designs on Facebook. Um, you'll you'll see, see the image of the finished ones there, because I've got an idea that I want to do this. There's a new set of stencils come out by a friend of mine called Paula in the Netherlands and she's done um, angel wings and stuff like that and I quite like the idea of potentially putting those on here. But I, I need to think it through. I just, I need to think it through. So anyone who's looking for the end result, the end result is just going to be the card blank with, with the panels on the front. Right. Now, 
Now I'm just going to turn my sponge over so I've got a cleanish area and I'm just going to make sure that I'm dabbing and taking off any areas that might have a little bit too much gold gathered up at the edges. I don't think I've got any on there but I've been quite careful with this application. Right, I'll save that bit of gold. I'll be using that for something later. I need to wipe my fingers off. Right, let's lift this up and see where we ended up. That's a lot better. Okay, I'm happier with that. That gives me the sort of fiery look I was looking for. The whole opulent, because these could be Christmas decorations. Like that could be a teardrop bauble for a for a Christmas tree. I don't know, as I said, this isn't the final level, so I'm not sure what, what we're going to do with this. So let's put this over to one side. And I think I'm going to have to stop you for two seconds and just hit this with a hairdryer just to make sure that it's completely dry. So here I'm back again, all nice and dry. The more I'm drying it, the more I'm actually liking it, which is fun. As I said, this isn't meant to be a Christmas card. This is meant to be a thank you card that's sent out at the end of the year. So if it's got a Christmas flavor to it, I'm okay. And as I said, I like this bauble type look. It could be that when I've cut the panels, I could come in and doodle just one of these into an actual bauble. Not sure. Don't hold me to that. Right, next thing I need to do now is I need to trim this down to the right sizes. So I'm hoping I've done my math correctly. So it's going to obviously be a little bit under the dimensions because I want to clean up the edges, but only as much as I absolutely have to. I want to try and get as close to four by six panels as I possibly can. And that's because I've got a five by seven card. And what I'm hoping to do, so I'm just focusing a second. What I'm hoping to do is to put these on the card. I need a little bit more of that. Um, I don't want, I don't want to layer it by putting another color behind it. I want this to be on, I'm putting them on a cream colored card. So actually, it's four inches wide, isn't it? So I can, I can be okay with taking a bit off this. Let's go back to this way. So four and four is eight, or it was when I went to school. God knows what it is nowadays, however. Right. This little strip will get kept because goodness knows where I will use something like that. So right, so I've got at eight, so I need it at four. Four. Let's double check. That is also four. Just a little bit. It's funny, I know this section of my guillotine sometimes cuts just a little weird, and I think it's where it slides it around. Now, thing I'm not liking is these areas here, these ends of the pieces, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim those off because I'm probably going to put a sentiment or a label or a thank you at the bottom of this anyway. So that means that I can just get a nice clean edged panel. And I've got a bit of a trick for the edges of the panels as well, which I'll share with you, obviously. I'm at a big craft show, well, tomorrow. <laughs> Um, yeah, I will have already been and come and gone and seen it by the time, by the time you see this video. And I'm hoping to try and find black card backs, blanks. Now, if not, I've got a whole pile of black card. I can make my own, but I'm just being lazy. Right. So this will be five and a half and two of those little notches. I, obviously, I work in technical terms here. So five and a half and two little notches, which is there. Does that make this one right? Have I done them right? As near as darn it, I'll be okay with that. All right, five and a half and two little, oh, it's just the same size. Yeah, near enough. Five and a half and two little notches. 
So, right, these give me my card pieces, which I'm very happy with. Right, now, I chose cream-coloured cardstock. I mean, these are blanks. I buy, I buy them in the internet or I buy them at craft shows. They usually sell them in bundles, and I really like that. But what I want to do is I want to give it a bit of a oomph for a bit of a pop. So... One of the tricks I really like to do is, I, I mean, I'm using a pro marker here. You can use any marker that's got a chisel to it, a chisel end. And I like to just run that chisel end around the edges. Now, you may not think it actually shows, but I think it does just enough to clean up the edges. So if I put that on there, it just gives a hint of an edge. I mean, if you look, that's, that's probably a better side to show you. See what I mean? I don't know whether that picks up on the camera. Let's see if I can pick them up. There is just the slightest black edge on there, and I like that. So that's what I'm going to do with all of these. I'm not going to put that in the place, sir. Um, it's a nice trick to use. I use this very often um, when I'm doing art pieces, just so that I don't have the core of the card or the paper showing. I do try to get a permanent marker when I do this, however, because if I'm going to continue and do more over the top, then who knows what the heck's going to happen. How am I doing for time? I'm just very conscious I don't want an hour and a half or a two hour video on this one. Pop the lid on there so it doesn't finish evaporating on me. So my thinking is with this card front, if I put this on here slightly raised, then I've got something for a sentiment or a word or maybe an embellishment. I could even put a piece of lace on there if that's what I wanted. So I'm going to do one of these, then I'm going to stop the camera and do the rest of them. Make sure the card's even. Sometimes when they cut them, there's a little bit of a lip over here. I always check that and I check that and just trim it if I need to. Right, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to show you how I put these on because there may be someone who's not seen me do it before. Um, I'll put them on there. I'll pause the camera. I'll do the other three and then I'll come back to you. So I'm using double-sided tape here, whichever double-sided tape you prefer to use. Right, it's a bit tricky with the camera in the way or the iPad in the way, so... I lay my double-sided tape down, then I get an acrylic block all the way up to the edge of the card and I tear against it. It's a technique I used to do and completely forgot until someone reminded me in the comments of one of my card making videos about doing it. I went, why do I forget them? And sometimes the best techniques are the ones you've used all the time and you just keep forgetting that you use them. I mean, I, I do lots of different creative interests and I can't retain everything. I don't even pretend to retain anything anymore. I'm, I'm of that age where I'm going to use my age as an excuse. So there you go. That's just the way I get a reasonably nice edge to it. Now, this is the trick that apparently lots of you really loved in the last videos I did on card fronts. Um, and I was like, but this has been done for years, but apparently not everyone knows it. So I'm just going to peel back the edge of my double-sided tape and I fold it at a 90 degree. I'm going to do that on all, all of them until I cut my nails last night, can't you? Fold it. And what this will do, it'll give me the ability. Let's see if I can find a knife. I'm struggling with that and I shouldn't be struggling. This is finger lift tape, so it means it's got a small area around the tape that you can just stick your fingernail under. But if you haven't got fingernails, that doesn't help, does it? Oh, there comes the sun again. Right, so I've actually got this ready to go. I want to have a look and see if there's any way up. I think I like that on the left-hand side. I'm then going to come in. I'm going to put a bit of glue in the middle. I don't know why I do that, but I've always done it. And then I'm going to pull you out of the sunshine so you're not annoying people. I'm going to come in and I'm going to try and look down from above. Now granted I'm looking through an iPad here so I'm very much hoping it's going to be centralized and straight. So because the bits of tape are folded back it holds 
it holds it proud of the surface so that it's not immediately sticking down. But the bit of Pritt stick or glue stick in the middle will hold it in place while I motion it round so it's in the right place. Then I put my fingers in the middle and then I'll pull the double sided tape covering off. And what that means is it gives me a bit of wiggle room to settle a card into its position. Ooh, I, that one's a bit close, isn't it? And don't cut your fingernails before you do this. So there you go. That gives us the start of our card front. I'm already loving that, actually. Right. As I said, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video. So the panels are all mounted in the same method I just showed. I'm going to do one or two things just to finish this off. Um, as I said, I'm not going to put any focal point on it because yet I haven't. I haven't come up with what a boy to do. So I'm going to bring in, this is a fine liner and it's a 0.8. It can be whatever you wish it, be, it to be. I like to just draw two what I call messy lines around the edges. And I like crossing them at the corner. And believe me, my perfection doesn't like me doing this, but I've done it often enough now that I trust the process and I know that it's going to work. And I just like the way that that frames that out. It is just literally a double line. I'm using a black liner. You could use anything. I mean, there's some really pretty metallics out there you could use to outline stuff. I just I just like this look. So you must do what pleases you because it represents who you are. So, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to put some sayings or sentiments along the bottom of these, which I will do in a minute, I promise you. So, so hopefully these will look festive enough to fit within the holiday season, but not be overly Christmas. Just uh, hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Now, this one went a bit wayward there. I'm going to redo that line because it didn't really... I would ran it up along the side of the card. Another important thing for me is signy work. So I'm just putting a signature on it. I usually put something, a little rubber stamp on the back as well, just so that it's mine. I should be proud of it, and I am proud of it. So that signed those. Now, there is other things you can do. You can make it look more stitchy by putting a squiggle in the corners so they look like a knot. But we're not doing that. No pun intended. So I have got a whole pile of these. Now, I got these off um, Amazon. I, oh God, I can't remember what they're called. Um, I don't know. And I know Tim Holtz does them. I know Diane Reevely does them. I think they're called... I think Diane Reevely's called Snarky Comments, and I can't remember what Tim's are called. Lots of people do them. As I said, um, if I find the link on Amazon, I'll put it in my comments. But um, I do know that Nicole uses them as well, and she's got a link for Amazon. So I might see if I can find them on hers and copy the link across to mine. So I quite liked the idea of these brown ones. Now, remember, we're not doing a Christmas card. We're doing... A thank you card or something I'm sending because I appreciate someone. So I'm using a glue stick because I don't trust a label further than I can throw it. I'm going to pull something out. Live your dream of passion. There you go. That's the one I want for this one. I just run my glue stick down it just because I want it to be permanent. It's one thing I do struggle with when I'm filming is actually trying to line stuff up when actually I've got I've got to look through a camera. Today is full of possibilities. There's another one I like. 
It's funny, every time I pull these out to use them, I always find something that just absolutely works for me. Up straight. So it's quite a quick process to mass make these sort of things. Be open to whatever comes next. That's probably going to be put on my tombstone, I should tell you. The amount of times I've had to reinvent myself in my life. I think I'm, I'm living proof that I've let myself be open to what comes next. That's straight, looks straight. And the very last one, let's see. Hold tight and pretend it's your plan. I like that one. I like all of them or I wouldn't be using them. Come on, I can't get hold of you. There you go. So that's finished those off. And it's just a quick little exercise. I mean, I could do so many other things with these. But as I said, until I actually find out what the focal point is going to be, I'm not going to do anything else with them. Did I do that upside down? Oh, poodles. Right. Is that one upside down? That's the right way up. That's the right way up. Right. OK, so we're going to have to come up with a plan B because it should have been that way up. Let's see if I can lift that up before it. Oh, that was a bit of luck. Right, let's stick that down again. In the right place. See, always check before you do it. Right, so I've got that back down on there. I'm going to come in, I'm going to sign this one again. Now, because I've got that in the corner, I'm going to actually make it look like it's intentional. And that will just hide my signature in there as well. So just something like that. That was a quick save. I wouldn't throw the whole card out because, you know what, it's still fine now. Right. Um, I think we're going to call it done now. As I said, I will sort out on social media sharing these when they're completely finished. I quite like them as they are, to be honest, but then I quite like things like this being quite minimal. I'm not sure what I'm going to put on to here. As I said, I do have some ideas, but not 100%. I personally would be quite happy to send that out as is with a nice little note in there from myself and send it out to someone. And I'll be happy that they received that because it's just a beautiful background. And I love that. So thank you very much for your patience, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. So thank you very much, guys. I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time. Goodbye now.